Hello and welcome to SFF Book Rex. I'm Marie and in this video I'll be showing you my first book haul. Um, the books that I've been buying in past, uh, well, month or so. Um, and these are just the physical books. I might be doing a separate, uh, separate video or haul for, for all the ebooks I've been buying. But let's start with, uh, with the fantasy books. And here is the pile for fantasy. Uh, the first one that I'm going to give a shout out to is The Library of the Dead by Teal Huchu. This is an urban fantasy book set to Edinburgh and the main character um, can see dead people. She can talk to them and uh, pass their messages and and um, and yeah and probably there's some kind of a, a mystery plot to this because urban fantasy books always do and uh, this, the author is a Bi BIPOC author he's originally from Zimbabwe but has been living in in Edinburgh for for a long time and um, and this book was kindly sent to me by uh, the one with scars who's a moderator in uh, fantasy subreddit and I won this in a contest so thank you so much scars for sending me this book she also sent me this lovely card and uh, and these pins which are book related this one says uh, so many books, so little time. Ain't that the truth? And this one says, reads well with others. Yes, yes I do. And um, so that uh, that's on my this month month's uh, TBR. So you will be hearing about that book on my mid-month wrap-up. And uh, then I bought a new book in Terry Pratchett's Discworld series, The Night Watch. This is a uh, book, I think three or four in the guards, guards, the Night Watch series, who are the guards of the city. And uh, this this will continue with with Sam Vimes's and the, the guards' uh, adventures. Really looking forward to reading this one. And then I got The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. Um, this is, uh, well, I guess it's urban fantasy, but it could almost be like maybe even magical realism. And it has, well, it's exploring uh, childhood memories and, uh, and their effects on our adult selves. And in Neil Gaiman's beautiful beautiful and unique writing style. So really, uh, really looking forward to reading this one. And the cover is beautiful. Then I got um, one of the hottest summer releases for fantasy, The Just Mind Throne by Tasha Suri. Um, this, uh, this book draws from Indian uh, history and mythology. And there are two main characters, um, uh, an imprisoned princess who, who her brother, well, brother put into this temple, abandoned temple, because she refused to burn herself in this religious uh, ritual. And uh, the other one is maidservant Priya, who's, um, who was formerly um, like a priestess or priestess trainee in this temple before before it was uh, raised and uh, and their their paths will will um, entwine and uh, together they will set the empire ablaze can't wait this uh, this I'll be reading reading in the beginning of the month so so you'll be hearing more in my mid-month wrap-up about this one okay and then the third one is The Crown of Shadows by C.S. Friedman. Uh, this is actually book three in her Cold Fire trilogy. 
I don't have yet books one and two. I'll probably buy them on Kindle. But this is um this is a kind of dark fantasy, so there are a bit a bit of horror elements. And how, what I know about this is that uh, in this world, if you if you like dream something, if you fear something, then your fears will manifest. So so that sounds sounds like a really interesting concept. Um, I've in the fantasy subreddit this has gotten a lot of praise. So I will this might make very good Halloween time read. So I'll be getting to this by then at latest. Um, and then uh, these are books from the library. This is Ursula Le Guin's uh, Twice uh, Dividing Tree. Let me see what the original is. The Telling. Uh, the Finnish translation is Twice Branching Tree. So I guess that's uh, like talking about a choice to be made. But basically Ursula Le Guin, this is her sci-fi. So um, she's, she's writing this very anthropological anthropological sci-fi with um, about aliens and different planets and different kind of species and and really really looking forward to getting this one and I I need to read it fairly quickly because it's from the library so so that's that's a good spur okay and then also from the library is a feminist classic by bell hooks man wants to change and this is a really short one so I'm probably gonna polish it off um, sometime in in July or during Ju July so sounds very interesting um, then I have three comics I've already shown you and read Saga by uh, by Brian K. Vaughan and um, Fiona Staples. And these, like you can see the cover, it's it's just really beautiful. And there's some art from uh, inside the book. Let me show you one of the like spreads. Well, that wasn't particularly great. Now that's a beautiful one. So um, these are uh, kind of space opera, it feels. Uh, like the main character, Alana and Marco, they are on the run from, from their governments because their species are, are warring. And, um, and, but they, they fell in love and, uh, and got married and they have a baby, Hazel who's actually like the narrator. She's telling things from her perspective many, many years later. And these are definitely adult comics. There's uh, swearing, there's uh, some nudity and um, very adult themes and happenings. So, so these aren't, well, the going can be a bit grim from time to time, but there are also like moments of levity and and um, and great banter and dialogue, and I just love these. Uh, uh, this uh, series has been on a bit of a hiatus, but uh, but we just got news that the author is uh, returning to this world. So yay, it's continuing. Can't wait. And then. Um, this one I got from the library and it's Persepolis uh, by Marianne Satrapi and this is talking about uh, about her childhood in Iran. So um, a very very interesting look into oh into um, well what her childhood was like in this one. It's also fairly short, so I'll probably get to it. Uh, during during July. 
Okay, then we have the next stack. These are kind of, uh, well, fantasy aligned. Uh, I have Tolkien's The Evolution of World, The Shaping of Middle Earth. So this is exploring like the, the choices he made as an author uh, while he was developing Middle Earth, the world building side of it. I just like Lord of the Rings has the best world building in, in any fantasy series, the deepest, the, uh, the most thorough. So I'm fascinated by the process of how it came to be. So really looking forward to delving into this eventually. And then I got uh, The Beast's Heart by Tanith Lee. This is a werewolf story and it's fairly short. It's like a little over 300 pages. So um, I remember reading this as a teen, teen and I've been looking for this book since because I didn't remember who wrote it. Um, and then I finally found it from, from used bookstore. So really looking forward to returning to this book and, and uh, rereading it because I've, it's been stuck into my mind for like, for like 20 years. So now I, I found it and I can reread it. Okay, then I got two um, YA books. These are Garth Nix's Keys to the Kingdom. And well, um, I've heard good things about these and I like really liked Garth Nix's Sabriel series. And he's, uh, the, the series name is Old Kingdom, but the first book is called Sabriel. It has a really unique magic system. So um, I'll probably be reading these books with my children. They are 12 or turning 12. I have a boy and a girl, twins. So I think that these will be fun books for us to read together. And um, then I got some historical books. Mm. Here. There's that pile. Um, the top one is so beautiful. Oh my God, I need to own the next books in this series. Look, there's like this kind of metallic mermaids and uh, such a beautiful cover. This is House of Niccolo, the first book of House of Niccolo series by Dorothy Dunette. And uh, she's, she's like, uh, so many, she has been an inspiration to so many other authors like um, that I, I just really finally want to read these books. And, um, and they are set to, I think, 1600, um, this, I'm thinking in Bruges. So, so it's taking place in, in the Netherlands. And um, well, Niccolo or Nicholas is um, taking over this merchant, uh, well, a mercantile company and uh, making it making it a huge success. There are, I think that there are like one, two, three, four. There are eight books in this series, and uh, I can't wait to get get started. Then I got another Dorothy uh, Donnett series, uh, the Le Monde series, which is also set to 16th century. And this takes place in Scotland, where Francis Crawford of Le Monde, scholar, soldier, rebel, nobleman and outlaw, returns to Edinburgh after he has been, well, uh, made uh, exiled from Scotland, but now he's been forgiven and he returns and political intrigue ensues. Um, New York Times gives him her very uh, high praise, a storyteller who could teach 
Shehrazade a thing or two about pace, suspense, and imaginative invention. And yeah, this is in accordance of, of all the praise that I've, I've also heard. So really looking forward to starting these, maybe in July, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what I can fit in beside my 10, uh, 10 book TBR. Then we have Con Igulden's The Emperor, which is telling about the life of uh, Julius Caesar in Rome, in ancient Rome. I mean, surely you know who, who this guy is. Um, so I love, I love ancient Rome. I might even dedicate a month or at least a week or two weeks of some month to reading all kind of uh, uh, ancient Rome, ancient history books, because I, I just love love that era of history. Uh, then then I have three historical uh, detective stories. These haven't been translated into English, but I'm just so I'm just briefly mentioning them. Uh, these books are by uh, Indrek Har Hargla and they are set to medieval uh, Tallinn, so the capital city of Estonia, which is uh, like very close to Finland. It's just a short sea voyage away across the bay. And uh, really, really intrigued by these. And then I have one by Niklas Nat Okadag. His name means night and day. And uh, this is set to 1794, Stockholm. And um, a time period that I haven't really read that much about. And um, so, so really interested in learning more about the history of that time and, and seeing what it was like in that time. Uh, and hopefully enjoying a good good mystery story also. Okay, but that was it for now. Um, and um, I hope to hear from you in the comments. Um, have you been buying any books lately? Reading any really good books? Or do you, have you read any of these books that I mentioned? Uh, any, any recommendations? Or like, like, were they any good? Or maybe you didn't like them? I'd love to hear. In the comments down below. Okay, but thank you for watching and uh, have a great day and see you in the next video. Bye for now.